Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop for part three of the postal logger shaft project. Uh, what we're going to do today is we'll finish fixing up our little oops from the other day, or well, actually, okay, it was a fairly decent mistake, but uh, we'll get that dealt with as well as we'll cross drill the shaft. Uh, and uh, we also need to still dig that um, old stub of uh, shaft out of the uh, postal logger drive. There are a number of machining operations that were required to do this, uh, mostly on the lathe, a uh, couple on the mill, but uh, one way or another it was, uh, it was a bit of a challenge for me and I, uh, I kind of enjoyed the, uh, the challenge of it. So anyway, I hope you find it interesting as well. So I popped by the shop this afternoon. We decided that this side here, the keyway here is fine. Um, we decided that it was probably best just to fill this side in for now. Uh, again, considering what this is going on, if we clean this up and bring it back down to the right journal diameter, we're fine. That's why I'm going to use the high-speed steel and carefully uh, take the uh, carefully take that down to diameter. Um, it's just filled with MIG weld. I know it's not the same alloy as the base. Hopefully, as far as the admixture and the edges won't be too much of an issue. As far as hardening, we'll just have to see. Uh, there may still be some file work done here, I guess. As well, we are looking at sizing and a little bit more armchair engineering. We're going to take two inches off this end here. Um, the uh, reason being that uh, we don't want that much stick out in the end. We'll take two inches off of here and then we'll do our cross drilling. Uh, we still have to match up the cross drilling with the other piece that you know, you'll see in a bit. But uh, anyway, yeah, so we're going to cut this down. 360. I want to be very careful here because because it's an interrupted cut. That's partly why I'm using the high-speed steel tool. Things I don't want to take too much at once because I don't want this thing coming out on me. So anyway, I'm just going to keep carving away at this, and I'll bring you back in when we're a little closer. So yeah, that. Saved our butt. Now I realize this gear is not the happiest. Again, this thing only this this unit only has to dig a few holes for him. He got it cheaply at a farm auction, so he only has to use it for a little bit. Well, time for another sketchy bandsaw setup. Uh, because of this journal back here, the larger diameter, I can't just put it right up against the fence. So I've got a couple of parallels there that the blade will just clear, and a block of square underneath, and some aluminum protecting the work. Gotta love sketchy setups. There we go. And definitely save this for something else. That would be a handy little piece. Well, there's a little bit of run out because I have it in a three jaw chuck, but we're just facing this end, so it doesn't really matter. So the last thing I need to do is dig this broken chunk of stud out of here and figure out where we're going to be doing our cross drill, um, cross drillings for the drive. Um, once we do that, the, uh, one will be uh, this way, say for example, and the other will be 90 degrees in relation to it. Um, at that point, uh, yeah, at that point we'll be done. But like I say, I just have to get that taken out first. Well, I'm afraid this may prove to be one of the more interesting parts of this, as far as trying to get that dug out of there without destroying too much tooling. Um, yeah. One way or another, we're just going to cut this out so we can slide the, um, that other piece in, and then we're going to do some cross drilling. And actually, that's where this piece uh, that we cut off, that two inch chunk off the end of it, will come in very handy.
All right. Well, it actually machines quite nicely. I just want to do that as a bit of a test, but also to clean up the end here and see what we're up against. Now, trick is trying to get a straight spot in the center there. Because I'd like to be able to drill a hole in it, but... I don't know how much I can do with that. is crazy. Well, I might have enough there to start a center cutting end mill. Yeah, it's... Look at that, how much it's wobbling. But it is cutting. After that initial bit at the top of the hole, the end mill seems to have found a happy happy place as far as uh, being centered. <clears throat> now I don't know how far into the tip this threaded portion goes. We're just going to cut it right out and take the threads out too. And now it's not going to evacuate chips properly, so we'll try something else. What I wanted to do with this is just put a point at the bottom of the hole. Really. Oh, there we go. That was it. Don't need to worry about putting a point in the hole. Alright, so that's how far in it goes. Before I can get a boring bar into it need to open the hole up just a little bit more and I do have 5 eighths and mill that should work here to help us out <clears throat> so basically we have about an inch and three quarters worth of material stuck in there we have to peel out now that we've at least got a little bit of a hole in the center that we might be able to poke a boring bar into, I'm going to use this just to clean up this face here. Try to get it reasonably square. I'll give it a try anyway. That's a start. So now what I've done is I've just gotten it down to the point where um, that broken off chunk at an angle is gone and I have, now have a flat register at the bottom there. Um, peeling outward a little bit here and there, I'm actually starting to now hit the base of the thread so I was actually able to peel out that chunk there. Um, I have two ways I could do this. I could either just keep going the way I am but it would be glacially slow. Uh, but what I think I'm going to do is now that I have a flat surface and I can use a drill bit uh, without it walking all over the place, uh, I'm going to get the biggest, some of the biggest drill bits I have and uh, finish punching through, then we'll bore it again. Alright, let's try with a one inch first. Alrighty. 
yep, like I say, it's some funky, odd-looking chips, but kind of odd material. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll bring you back in when we're closer. Well, I was just taking another pass here, getting out closer to the edge, and I just had a chunk of the thread break out of it. And Thankfully, I think the tip is still okay for the moment, but uh, yeah, I think we're getting close. There, that's, that's better. We want that to be a reasonably loose fit because in the field there's going to be dirt and crud and whatever happening with it, so... There. Got about, yeah, about 15 thousandths on the outside. A little over 15. Because I can take it and stick it in there. A little bit of rock. 15, 20 thousandths. I'm happy with that. Now, let's clean up the edges. But yeah, I mean, considering what it has to do and how rough the rest of the machine looks, that will be acceptable. After discussing um, at work there, uh, we decided that we're going to uh, do two holes that will be cross-drilled 90 degrees. Um, I find that the proportion that seems to work the best as far as having enough meat uh, between the holes is going to be 9 16 from the one end and an inch and a quarter from that end. Uh, I've got it mounted in a, uh, a V-block. This is sort of a, it's not really what you could call a precision ground V-block, but for purposes like this with, believe me, the tolerances on this unit for most anything besides the couple things that were critical, the, yeah, the tolerances are pretty forgiving. As it is, we'll be using um, a 15 30 seconds drill bit on our final hole size. Okay, good enough. I've been burned by that before, so we're going to do a sanity check. That's uh, yeah, that's uh, that's nine sixteenths. Yeah, good. My volumeter tells me that's in the middle. All right, both axes are locked. So there we go. That was the last hole drilled. Again, I indexed it using the uh, adjustable parallel. Yeah. That'll be plenty close enough. But there we go. All right. Now we we'll just have to deburr the holes. But that should provide the uh, drive mechanism he was looking for. Once I deburr those holes, this shaft is done. Um, I'm just going to drill the uh, little socket here where it goes in. Like I say, the, the holes are still burred, so it's going to be hard to deal with, but it will go in, but kind of tight. Um, 
I'm going to drill the matching holes in the, um, the auger bit drive to, to correspond. And I'll just do that off camera. Well, even after working through a couple small mistakes, and well, actually one was pretty big, but we did fix it. I uh, got it done. Um, my boss will be happy with this one. Again, my boss is actually a good buddy of mine too, so I could say it's a buddy project, uh, whatever. It, yeah, I still consider him a friend, even though now I work for him. So that little spot there, filled in, dealt with, cleaned up. Um, that keyway does work and we have our shafts the correct diameters and we have our cross drilled holes for the drive because he's going to use he's going to use pins through those and what's pretty slick is our holes even well okay it's kind of hard to hold it and turn it at the same time without yeah so yeah the holes the holes all line up nicely so so yeah he'll be happy uh thanks you all for coming along for the ride uh it's been uh it was a bit of an interesting challenge. I, he handed me this thing and said, you know, can, you ma can we make this work? And so considering the uh, piece of equipment it's going on, uh, the acceptable tolerances for certain parts are pretty wide. Uh, the parts that needed to be critical were kept critical. Um, even after the welding here, uh, I set it up on the V blocks with the dial indicator and uh, between heat, well, basically between here and here we only have one thou worth of run out and overall length that's only like two and a half three ish it's a low speed unit um the rest of the machine itself is in well medium to fit well okay fair shape i'll give you that um he bought it fairly cheaply at a farm auction and uh, now we see why and uh you know it was one of those deals where he just couldn't say no and figured we could see if he could get it working. So he only needs to poke a few holes in the ground. It'll be plenty good for that, for his purposes. And uh, yeah, one way or another, uh, he can get what he needs to do done and he doesn't have to spend a fortune doing it. So I consider it still a win, even with the uh, small oops. So thanks for coming along for the ride. Hope you found it interesting. Um, comments and questions are always in, uh, welcome. Likes, you know, subscribe if you want. Um, if you haven't subscribed, that's cool. Thanks for coming through. So thanks for everything, everybody, and uh, I'll see you all next time.